Hello and welcome back. Now we're going to be doing, uh, here's another test actually on two population variances. Uh, now I'm stealing another problem from uh, module 10. Module 10, you recall, we, we were doing t tests on the difference in two population means. And when we were performing those t tests, of course, we had to figure out what were the degrees of freedom. And there were two ways of calculating the degrees of freedom back then. One was, I don't know if you remember, it was a huge, big, ugly formula with all of these things squared and big, big, ugly calculation. That formula was necessary if we had reason to believe the two population variances were not equal to each other. If they were equal to each other, then we wouldn't have to use that big gross formula. We just calculated it n1 plus n2 minus 2. And that was uh, clearly a much easier way to determine the degrees of freedom. So what we're going to do here in, in module 11 is we'll actually test to see was this necessary. In, chapter, in module 10, when we did this exercise, we assumed uh, that the variances were not equal, and so we had to calculate degrees of freedom using this big calculation. Now that we've gone through and we know how to test for equality on the variances, now we can see was that assumption necessary. So here we're going to develop a test to determine if the assumption of unequal variances was appropriate. So let's go through and we'll set this up as a hypothesis test. This is a two-tailed test because that assumption of unequal variance, well, that's is it not equal or is it equal, it's clearly uh, a two-tailed test. So here we'll have sigma 1 equal to sigma 2, and it's not equal. So if we reject this null hypothesis, then that means that yes, the assumption of unequal variances was appropriate. If we failed to reject this null hypothesis, then we could say, well, no, it wasn't appropriate. We didn't need to assume inequality. We could have calculated degrees of freedom using the much simpler method. So here's, uh, here's our test. Oops, this should be a 1. We'll do this at the 05 level of significance, as stated here. Now let's go ahead and calculate our test statistic. So F S1 over S2. Let's see. Let's, uh, well, we'll reread the problem. We've already done this exercise, but let's get some context here. Remember, we're looking at these different breeds of dogs, golden retrievers, border collies. As a dog lover, you become interested in determining whether or not the data would support such a claim that the retrievers are faster. We have 24 golden retrievers and 32 border collies running a race. We find the averages. We don't actually need the averages for this test. We calculate the sample standard deviations to be 1.3 and 0.8. So there's the values that we need. And remember, we always calculate this test statistic such that the larger of the two values is the one in the numerator. So this is going to be 1.3 out of divided by 0.8, both of those squared. And so I've therefore defined population one as the golden retrievers and population two as the border collies. Now we can calculate the value of our test statistic. Oops, that's a bad spot for that to go. 1.3 squared divided by 0.8 squared, 2.64. 2.64. So there's our test statistic. What is our distribution? Well, let's look up a critical value. If alpha is 05, this is going to be 0 0.025. Our degrees of freedom, so golden retrievers was in the numerator. That was the larger one. So I had 24 golden retrievers, so that means I have 23 numerator degrees of freedom. And 32 border collies, so 31 denominator degrees of freedom. So we'll go to our F tables for 23 and 31. So let's go in the denominator degrees of freedom first. 31, probably don't have it. The best we have is 30. 
and 23 in the numerator. Closest we'll have, I guess, is 25. Now where those two come together, here we have our relevant block of four critical values and their corresponding probabilities. Now we're going to do a two-tailed test. So a two-tailed test means I want alpha divided by two is 0 0.025. That corresponds with a critical value of 2.124. So if we come back here, I have a critical value 2.124. So looking at that F distribution, whatever its shape is, here I have my critical value, F alpha divided by two is 2.124, zero is out here, test statistic is 2.64, so that's somewhere way out here, 2.64, that is in my rejection space. So, I can reject, based on the critical value approach, I can reject this null, and I can say, yes, it was appropriate to assume unequal variance, because now I have evidence that supports that assumption, that the variances do appear to be unequal. Let's quickly do a p-value approach, just for practice. So we'll look for our test statistic, 2.64. Let me clean this up a little bit. So 2.64, well 2.64, it's larger than the largest value in that set of four. So if our test statistic is larger than the largest value, that means that our probability is smaller than the smallest value. Now the smallest value here is 0 0.1, 0 0.01, not 0 0.1, 0 0.01. This is a two-tailed test, so our p-value is going to be two times 0 0.01, and it's going to be something smaller than that, because again, our test statistic is smaller than, the, uh, sorry, larger than the largest test statistic or critical value, so our p-value is going to be smaller than the smallest in that chart. So this means my p-value is going to be something less than something less than 0 0.02, not equal to, but less than. And again, just to be clear, here we had our test statistic was 2.6, so it's larger than the largest. So our relevant probability is smaller than the smallest. The smallest value is 0 0.01 times 2 is 0 0.02. So our p-value is something less than 0 0.02. So that's it. That's all there is to this problem. Using both the critical value approach and the p-value approach, we reject that null hypothesis. We do have evidence to show that the assumption of unequal variances was appropriate in this case. Okay, good. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.